Hello students from English department and from translation department and welcome to our uh, second lecture of the second semester. So in, the, in this lecture I will go over a little bit biography of Oliver Goldsmith and then I will talk a little bit about the context of the play because it's very important and necessary to know a little bit about it and then I will just guide you through the characters of the play and then we'll go through the synopsis of the play or let's say the summary of the play uh, I want to probably do the synopsis in different separate video because uh, I don't want um, the video to be very long for you to upload or to download let's say from YouTube so uh, starting from the author uh, I will not go actually in details with his information because you will not need all of this information. Rather, you will need to know a little bit about him um, because if someone asks you who uh, who is Oliver Goldsmith, so at least you need to have a little bit information. Okay, so let's start. Where was he born? So he was born in uh, Ireland to Anglo-Irish parents, and then he moved to after that and settled in London. But before he did that, he traveled around Europe, and he was at that time also graduating from Dublin. So after he graduated from Dublin, he traveled all over Europe, and then finally settled in London. Okay, so um, he was very prominent at the time and he started writing poems, plays, short stories and novels and his readable style earned him the respect of more prominent writers. So a lot of writers started to respect him, uh, especially the, prof the professor Edmund Brooke and Samuel Johnson. So. The important thing about it is that he, despite his acceptance into these high circles, um, there is a truth about Goldsmith because he was um, known to be deeply ambitious of his friend. And then he's awkward, ashamed of his physical appearance. So this is a little bit, let's say, a, a deep information about his personal life. So he was a drunk. Uh, unfortunately, he was a gambler as well, and um, he was a, an extremely bad manager of his own money. Okay, so uh, his friend, uh, his friends often remarked him uh, on the contrast between his personal life and his, let's say, beautiful. Uh, writing and this this is a very important student to have a look when let's say the contrast between his personal life and how he used to look to himself and between his let's say style of uh, style of writing as you can see here his friends often remarked on the contrast between his personal life the same thing that I told you and then his uh, beautiful writing so there is a contrast so he's he was not a loser actually he was a good writer so goldsmith um died in 1774 after falling to seek medical care for a treatable kidney infection so he had a kidney infection and then that can cause his death so this is a little bit information about the uh writer of the play Okay, so let's start from the historical context uh, of the play. And uh, we need to understand that the play takes a place during the long and relatively peaceful reign of King George III. So what happened at that time, there, were, there was a great transition for England. So England became an increasingly prosperous nation occupying a central position on the world stage. So there was a revolution and this kind of revolution is agricultural one. Okay, so this revolution led to an increase in um, agricultural production and a massive farmland. Okay, so a lot of ruler dwellers, let's say farmers from the city started to 
to go from let's say the farms farmers and a lot of farmers started to move uh from uh, their place to the city because they were looking for work because there was a agricultural revolution in which there is let's say a lot of factories were built so for this reason workers are started to leave their farms and move to the city side let's say so we can see here that the agricultural landscape was shifting from numerous small farms to several massive farms okay and this change you know in the number of farms let's say or the 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 revolution itself it drove many farmers out of the country and into the factories created by whom the industrial revolution okay so the changing economic makeup of england at that time was reflected by the growth of the middle class so students, if there is a revolution, especially agricultural ones. So let's see here that there's going to be uh, a, a class distinction, which means there will be a poor people and there will be a middle class people and there will be a high people. OK, so that the farmers, the low people go to work for the middle people class or let's say high class. So there is the countryman and there is the city man, let's say so. So a lot of the class divisions this is very important a student because this whole play she stoops to conquer is about class division and we will see that hopefully uh, when we come to act one and act two okay we're slowly but surely becoming more pronounced as the industrial revolution okay and it's a very early years was creating a new class of working poor in the increasingly cities okay so uh, you know um, among these cities a wealthy uh, urban elite they began to see themselves as superior more cultured and worldly than people of the same class who lived in the countryside so people who moved from the countryside and lived in the city and work in the factories and they started to feel themselves superior to those people on the same class let's say their friends their families okay who live on the countryside okay so this social dynamic sets the stage for many of the interaction in she stoops to conquer okay Be this let's say cla class distinction is very obvious in the play so this historical context of the play or let's say the time in which the play was written is reflected in the play okay students i will not go all over these things things and details only when I start um, explaining the synopsis of the play so that you will understand what's happening and how the characters engage with another especially the low class people and how they treat the high class people and on contrary how the high class people treat the lower class uh, people okay so she stoops to conquer opened on March the 15th in 1773 so dr johnson wrote i know of nothing comedy for many years that has so much exhilarated an audience that has answered so much the great end of comedy making an audience merry so what he meant by that he was praising she stoops to conquer because he said i have never seen such a comedy that um the audience started to laugh the audience was very you know feeling merry like it means happy okay they were they were very cheerful cheerful events that happened in the play and in all goldsmith writings he tried to show the audiences especially their errors it tried to show to the audience the errors okay and to remind them of their blessings to give them a love of life okay because of his comic vision critics have put oliver goldsmith in the great tradition of chaucer and shakespeare 
So and she stoops to conquer, Goldsmith attacked the 18th century sentimental comedy. Um, do you know, remember in our first lecture, we talked about um, comedy of manners and sentimental comedy. And, you know, um, do you remember when I talked about sentimental comedy in which there is an emotion? and a little bit of tragedy so goldsmith when writing she stoops to conquer he criticized the sentimental comedy he wanted to remove this sentimental comedy from writings okay he wanted to restore the laughing comedy or the comedy of manners and banish sentimentality in theater so she stoops to conquer is very effective why it is effective because of the broad broad characterization and the humor it has so uh if you do remember that comedy the difference between comedy and a tragedy i told you that at the beginning of the comedy there is a, a funny mistake or let's say an error or uh, a problem a little bit a problem but it's very funny and very silly okay so the, the fun is always there in comedy so the fun is in the situations characters and dialogue as well so students try to pay attention to these three lines is very important okay so various titles were suggested for the so students try to pay attention to um various titles okay were suggested what it means by that that she stoops to conquer there is a various titles for the play then later on goldsmith decided to name it she stoops to conquer so one of the various um titles is the bell's tragedy okay uh, the old house and you in uh, the mistakes of a night the last one is very important because where it was chosen as a subtitle so goldsmith chose she stoops to conquer with the mistakes of a night as a subtitle okay so let's have a little bit look at of the characters of the play so let me just try to um do this a little bit okay so we have the characters of the play and we have mr hard castle an old-fashioned country gentleman gentleman and we have mrs hardcastle okay so here's a mr here's a mrs which means his wife tony lumpkin a country pumpkin he is the son of mrs hardcastle by a previous marriage so tony is mrs hardcastle's son and his father is not Mr. Hardcastle. Brother, his father is someone different. So Mrs. Hardcastle married someone and then she had Tony Lumpkin. And after that, she married Mrs. Hardcastle. Okay. We have Kate Hardcastle, the pretty daughter of Hardcastle. So Kate is Mr. Hardcastle's daughter and Mrs. Hardcastle's daughter. We have Constance Neville, and this is the pretty niece of Mrs. Hardcastle. And this is important because we will go over the Constance. Sometimes in the play, they call her Constance, not the full name Constance Neville. Okay. Then we have... Then we have Istingo, who is the owner of the tavern, tavern, which means the inn, the three pigeons, okay? And then we have young Marlow, the handsome young gentleman. We have George Hastings. So this is Hastings, okay? So you have, when you read the name, to differentiate it between Hardcastle and Hastings. So George and Marlowe, both of them are friends. 
Sir Charles Marlowe, he is the father of Marlowe, okay? And we have also a servant in Mrs. Hardcastle's household. So let's see how, like all the scenes took place in the country, in the house of Mrs. Mr. Hardcastle, okay? So all the action took place there. And then in the nearby tavern, the three pigeons. Okay, student, I hope this is clear so far. In the next video, I will talk about the synopsis of the play.